AMD's 12-core processors, a Sony VAIO review, and more coming up on Hot Hardware with Dave Altavilla and Marco Cipetta. Save time and money by skipping business trips and using GoToMeeting. Visit gotomeeting.com slash tech podcast and get 30 days for free. Welcome back to Hot Hardware on Tech B. So let's get right to it. AMD is shipping some new processors. What's exciting about this? These things have 8 and 12 cores. Dave, what's the story with AMD's latest? Yeah, it's actually a server or an enterprise uh, processor that uh, AMD has put together here. And uh, they sort of uh, leaked it out a little bit over one of their uh, blog posts. The AMD director of product marketing uh, s said that one of their resellers had accidentally leaked this information and they were going to uh, announce in the next coming months uh, 8 and 12 core processors based on what we know now to be a pair of Istanbul 6 cores on a single package. So they're taking two 6-core processors and putting them on the die on a single package to add up to as many as 12 cores on, you know, one, in one socket. It's actually pretty impressive. So if you're talking to a normal person like me, what exactly is this going to be used for? I mean, 8, I mean, eight and 12 cores, I don't think there's a lot of software out there that can take advantage of this. Is this really for virtual machines? Yeah, well, certainly virtual machines. That's that's an application where you know you've got a, a bunch of users banging on a single server to um, you know run applications. Um, but in the data center, where you know uh, performance per watt and performance per uh, and bandwidth and uh, compute power per square millimeter is hugely important, uh, that's where these cores, the, these processors, these many core processors come into play and where they're most attractive. So it's definitely an enterprise type product. And what's interesting about it is that. You know, for years, uh, Intel didn't have this um, front, uh, this serial technology on chip. They had this thing called a front side bus. And it didn't allow them to scale as many cores on chip, on die, on the same package because of it. It was, you know, lots of pins and it was bulky. AMD always had hypertransport, which is a serial uh, connectivity, it's a serial link, and allowed them to scale, you know, multiple cores on a chip um, much sooner than Intel. Now it's like the two of them are going, you know, head to head in this, you know, battle royale of how many cores you can squeeze on a chip. So it's it's pretty impressive. It's eventually going to trickle down to the consumer space. Right now, uh, this AMD technology is uh, more of an enterprise play. But in the end, consumers are going to get, you know, more horsepower, more more uh, cores as well. And uh, we're just going to have to find a way to use up that power, Randall. I think, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Ayaz. I think you can. I think you can figure that out, right? Yeah, well, you know, Randall and I, we get confused all the time. From super-powered <laughs> processors to an ultra-low voltage one, the Sony VAIO Y series features a CLUV processor and, of course, features Sony's really slick styling. Mar Marco, hot, hot Hardware, and I can never say this name, did a review on the Sony VAIO Y series. How did it fare? It actually fared really well. Now, what's interesting, besides the hardware you just mentioned, the CLUV processor and the fact that it's a Sony VAIO, is that it's actually a relatively affordable machine. Typically, Sony's VAIOs have been, you know, stylish and, and really slick machines that carried a price premium. But the model we tested with the, the 1.3 gigahertz processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and Intel graphics was under 800 bucks, and it, it fared really well in the benchmarks, relatively speaking. Uh, so, like, it's for styling-wise, I mean, it looks like it's going up against more of an IBM kind of Lenovo styling. It doesn't seem to be as... Uh, as you know, round as a bio normally looks. What can you tell me about the uh, the weight and the actual feel, the build quality? So build quality was top notch. The unit is uh, nice and thin. We definitely would put it in the same class as the uh, the ThinkPad Edge that we spoke about on a previous show. Um, battery life. You know, Sony claims you know up to eight to ten hours. We only tested it at three. But our test is, you know, really taxing and stresses the system 100%. Um, as far as weight, you know, it's going to vary depending on the configuration. It's about three and a half pounds the way we tested it. All around, just, you know, a nice little machine, great keyboard, nice screen. Considering that it's under 800 bucks, we think Sony did a really good job with it. Sounds pretty cool. Some, yeah. ha uh, some hardware was uh, used for some pretty shady purposes recently. Over in Pennsylvania, a school seems to be spying on its students with webcams. Dave, can you fill in the viewers about this? This just seems really bizarre. Yeah, this is one of those stories that just went viral across the web because it really, you know, hits a chord with so many people, uh, whether you be a mom or, or dad or, you know, a high school student yourself. Um, it's, yeah, actually, uh, Lower Marion School District actually had issued um, 
uh, Apple MacBooks to um, you know their schools to you know specifically uh, high school students and you know they're property of the school system and um, supposedly there's there's conflicting stories out there you know the students were or were not supposed to take them home um, but you know if they're if they're you know loaning out MacBooks which you know portable personal computers uh, you would think that there's you know probably some access to take them off school grounds at any rate. They made the mistake of firing up the webcam on this MacBook and then trying to um, reprimand one of the students for allegedly doing drugs on camera. So this is That's really the a, story. This is a case of flat out stupidity of the school for actually mentioning that they were spying on these kids. That's what the crazy thing is. I mean, nobody would have known that they were doing this unless they tried to re like reprimand the student, like you put it. Oh, so what do you think the answer is? Should, should schools not? give out laptops? Should students be putting duct tape all over cameras? What do you think should happen? <laughs> well, you know, duct tape and the webcam, if you're borrowing it, probably might not be a bad idea if, if you think your school system might be uh, up for, for spying on you. But, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a, it, it was such a viral and um, talked about story all over the internet and in different media outlets that, you know, there's a lesson learned here. Um, Certainly, you know, I mean, again, there's conflicting reports. We're hearing that, you know, the school only activates the webcams when they, um, you know, when it was taken off the of school grounds and they were trying to locate it because, you know, kind of like LoJack, it was stolen. And, you know, so they were going after the student for that. But the problem was that, you know, the administration accused this kid of something other than, you know, taking the MacBook. They accused him of doing drugs. And it was actually Mike and Ike's candies that he had in his possession, you know, you know, big powerful uh, candies like that. They're, wow. they're dangerous. That's a lot of sugar. You know, you can get like on a real sugar high, you might go rampant. You might take 40 photos on photo booth. Wow, that's a, that's, yeah. I think that's a snafu of a large degree right there. Uh, switching gears entirely. There's a new mid-level priced ATI graphics card out. It's called the Radeon 5830. Marco, you've reviewed this graphics card. What's good about it? What's bad about it? And, and what makes this mid-priced anyway? So well, what makes it mid-priced is that the GPU has kind of been pared down. Um, it's the same chip used in the 5870 and 5850, but some of the stream, process stream processors have been disabled. Um, there are 1,120 in the 5830, and there's 1,600 in the 5870. But by doing that and you know, using more of their available chips, they're able to sell the card at a lower price. So the good thing is you get all the features and a lot of the performance of a higher-end card. The bad thing is is it kind of consumes similar power to the higher-end cards for less performance. You know, but as far as uh, enthusiasts are concerned, I don't think they care about a few watts when we're talking about a high-end graphics card. So performance-wise, it, does, it, does it feel mid-ranged or does it feel more like a higher-end? I mean, what's the trade-off? Well, the trade-off is strictly in frame rate. So in comparison to NVIDIA's current lineup, um, it's about as fast as a GeForce GTX 275, which also happens to be the same price. But the advantage with the ATI card is that it's a newer architecture. It supports DirectX 11, ATI's Affinity technology. It's just a, you know, a more future-looking card. And at the same price point and same performance, probably the better buy for most people. Hey Dave, how about you fill in the viewers about that great giveaway you guys are doing? I hear you're giving away an awesome gaming rig. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're, sh we're showing the love, continuing to show the love, carrying over from February and the Valentine's Day uh, holiday week. We are, are giving away a CyberPower PC, a high-end gaming rig. Contest ends March 14th, and it is a, a high-end rig. It's based on uh, a Core i7-920 Intel processor and uh, Radeon HD 5870 high-end graphics card. And uh, stop on by the site, join up, and you could win some, uh, some hot hardware yourself. And that's it for this edition of Hot Hardware on TechBeat. Dave, Marco, thanks for all the information. You can find everything we talked about, including that cool giveaway, at hothardware.com. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and we'll see you later.